Thank you to all my partners all across the world. Thank you so much for sowing into this ministry and thank you so much for sharing the broadcast. Thank you for all of your honor, all of your focus, your attentiveness to this ministry and you are blessed. You're prosperous and these things in which I'm telling you on here is going to like take you to the next degree. Now, I want you to um I want you to consider this that you have a meditation place that's reserved for God and is reserved for his goodness and is reserved for the harvest of your obedience. Remember what Isaiah chapter one, verse uh, 19 says that if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. And so this good of the land is the harvest Ability of God being promised to you, granted to you, and meaning that you're, you're actually supposed to be a partaker of this. Like it, it's supposed to happen for you. You're supposed to partake of this, experience this, see this, and it's supposed to come to pass for you. So... When you're eating the good of the land, this is the after product of um, your soul sticking to the way of God, keeping his way, not going to the left or to the right, but keeping his way. Now, saints, uh, I remember when um, I was coming up, one thing that I began to notice was this, that uh, uh, some of the people that I would hear talking about the Lord were people that um, they didn't cross over into actively keeping his way. They just was talking from the aspect of form of godliness. There was no dying to self. There was no wisdom. There was no understanding. And, and um, what I began to recognize very early on in life that to get the power and the glory of God to move in your life specifically, you have to be the one intentional in, intentional about doing the decisions that God wants you to do. And if you don't do, if you're not intentional about doing those decisions, then you just fall into the bracket of those, those same people that just talk about the Lord, you know, the Lord is good. You know, Jesus is Lord. You know, Jesus died and rose again. And, and, and they have all the good statements, right? They, they talk correct. You know, all things about to work together for my good because I love God called according to his purpose. But you don't see the dedication to the Holy Ghost in their life. You don't see no activity of submission, surrender, hunger, Pursuit. You don't see no fire, no zeal, no excitement, no conversation with God. And so the soul has to come into a place of true meditation on the reward for not ignoring God like the rest of the world. You have to take the time to really think about this. That the whole majority of the world disrespects God all the time. The whole totality of the world. There are billions of people that live disrespectful to God all the time. They have no hunger for him. They have no focus on him. So you have to really capture that when you say Jesus... My life is for your good pleasure. The minute that you do that, all of his good pleasure is now en route to you. Now, saints, I want, I want to say this to you. Do you know that the, the, the biggest miracle that, you're, that you will ever have in life is not a healing in your body? The biggest miracle you will ever have in your life is when your soul can properly see God and 
and respond to God the way that he wants you to respond to him. That's the biggest miracle you ever going to have in your soul. When your soul starts responding to the Lord the way that it was created to respond to him. That's the biggest miracle you will ever have in this life. The biggest miracle is when you start fearing God. The biggest miracle that you will ever have is not a debt-free house. The biggest miracle is where you got a debt-free soul. And you receive the finished works of Jesus. And you let the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom, you let it flow out of your soul. The biggest miracle that you'll ever have is when the fear of God is now influencing your soul. That's the biggest miracle. And so saints, now you understand why the word of God say in Proverbs 22 verse 4, that by humility and the fear of the Lord is riches, honor, and life. Because what's really going to take place when the soul is in the fear of God and is really humble before God, that's when all the other miracles that you desire and that you enjoy and that you engage yourself in and your life becomes upgraded with and your life becomes higher, your life becomes blessed with, all those miracles are tied into that one miracle of the fear of God and humility being perfected in your soul. Being poor and pride, proud is a curse. Being poor and proud is a curse. Because remember, you're going to have to leave pride to get to the prosperity, the provision, the, 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 the money, the wealth, the abundance. For you to get to the success, good success, you're going to have to leave the pride. To be poor and proud is a curse. Many people have ego while they're broke. Remember, you, you haven't arrived where you're supposed to arrive yet. So that means that my mode of staying low should really be on a high alert for me. Since I remember when I was coming up financially, I remember I was living with some people. And I remember some, there were some other people that had advised me to be disrespectful to the people. And here's what the person told me. They said, uh, these people don't believe in what you believe. So stand up for your God and... Tell them what it is. This is what the person told me. And saints, when I dealt with the people, I did completely opposite. And the people were serving a false God. And guess what? You know what they would do? They would buy me meals every evening. They would cook meals fresh and give me whatever I wanted. There was a, another uh, person that lived in the house that was getting money from the government. I mean, large amounts of money. And they would drop $1,000 in my hand. <laughs> and saints, the person that gave me that advice went go live in the homeless shelter. And then they kicked them out the homeless shelter. And then they was moved to another homeless shelter. And saints, I followed the spirit of God. They told me to stand up. Those people don't believe in you. They don't believe in God. Give them a piece of your mind. Stand up. Da, da, da. And I did it completely opposite to what they said. And I had favor with God and with men in that place. And this is a true story, by the way. And I remember... Um, I was a teenager at that time. I was like around that 16 age, uh, going into either 17. I think, yeah, I was around that 16 age, I believe. And what I started recognizing was this, that there are more fools in the earth than wise. And there are people that listen to the devil 
while saying that they're listening to God in a situation and they lose. And they keep on losing. We meet a lot of old people like that. You you go talk to them, you tell you you, you hear how they say that, oh the Lord had his hand on me since birth. But they don't own a house, they don't own nothing, they don't own nothing. Nothing has happened from the blessing of the Lord because they deceived themselves. And very early on in life, I started recognizing the Holy Spirit, when he speaks to you, he kills you. You can't do what you want. When the devil speaks to you, you do what you want. When the Holy Ghost speaks to you, he will use the very foolish thing to confound the wise. So, so he going to tell you to do something that's actually making you look foolish. It makes you look weak. And that's the way to prosperity. That's why we don't see a lot of Christians rich. Because it's stupid. If a Christian person goes into the workplace, oh, you know, uh, I've been qualified all these years. I got degree. I do this. I did this the years ago. Da, da, da. But then the unsaved person just at the boss feet saying, boss, do you like it like this? Boss, what else could I do for you? Boss, are you satisfied with my work? But the Christian person is, you know, you know, you can't fire me because remember, God brought me here. Remember, God going to deal with you if you fire me. But the sinner person, boss. Uh, do you need me to come in on this Saturday? I see that you ain't got work done, boss. And the, the pleasing aspect are in the children of darkness, not the children of light. And when I say children of light, I mean people that are supposed to be accredited as wise. They are the fools on earth. The people that are accredited fools are the wise on earth. That's why the money is in Jay-Z's hands. That's why the money is in Beyonce's hands. Because even though you talk about these people and say that they're evil, they are people pleasers. They suck up to the needs of people. And that's why they prosper. The people that say that they have the Holy Spirit, they have their preference. And if they don't get their preference, there's no way. It's either their way or no way. But the worldly people, they make money because they are smart. They know how to please the person with the money. <laughs> it's not hard. Since I learned this from Dr. Mike Murdoch, Dr. Mike Murdoch is such a, a fabulous teacher in this. And um, one time I was spending time with him he was talking to me and he told me, he said, uh, the person, the, the place that you create pleasure is the place where you create your prosperity. And, um, I remember I've, I've had the privilege of, uh, cooking, uh, for Dr. Mike Murdoch. I had the privilege of like, uh, uh, fixing his bed where he slept you know, fixing, fixing his bed sheets. And like fixing, like setting it up so that he could come into his room and get sleep. And, uh, and I'm already gone. But, you know, when he do come to his room, I was able to fix the room. And um, one thing that I had noticed that uh, when I was fixing his room, I would find out what sense did he want in the room. And I would find out what, um, how did he like his bed covers like uh, situated. How, how much pillows did he want on his bed? And I would find out, did he want juice on, uh, with, that's covered, of course, on, on, on his, uh, drawer? What did he want? And I pursued information on all these things. And whoever had done it possibly more than me or before me, I would have conversations with them. Uh, do you want this here? Do, do, do has, Is he okay with this being here and stuff like this? One thing that I caught was this. While I was in that mode, it had nothing to do with me. Nothing. 
And I started thinking about it. While I was doing this, I was thinking about it. The path of divine money is where you disappear. It has nothing to do with you. The path of divine money is where someone else is exalted in front of you. That's why we don't see a lot of Christians with money. Because they have a gift. They have a prophetic anointing. God talks to me too. I feel led of the Lord. The Holy Spirit. I know what God tells me. I had a dream. I have visions. I go with my heart. I go with my gut feeling. And all those things. It is not the path of God. It's the path of deception. Saints, uh, the other day, Dr. Mike Murdoch said, I love being around you. I love being around you. He said it more than once. And, and, and why, I, I'm not saying something that he tell me privately. He told his people that on the line. See, I'm not going to say it if he tell it to me. You know, like private, uh, you know, privately, and it's not something that he publicized. He told his people that on the line, love being around Prophet Joshua. I love being around him. Now, you got to understand, Dr. Mike Murdoch is a very exact man. If you distract him, he gets irritated. If you do something, if you have an inappropriate request, if you speak something inappropriate in his presence, it bothers him. He's in that wisdom mantle and that wisdom mantle loves humility, fear of the Lord, respect, purity of heart. It loves when wisdom is being seen in someone else's behavior. So for him to say that he loved being around me and repeat it, you got to catch what he's really saying. When I'm around you, I'm not concerned that the devil will talk to you. When I'm around you, I'm not concerned that another kingdom is governing your actions. May I ask you whose spirit is leading your life? Who's guiding your life? Who are you? Because when you make that decision to follow the Holy Ghost, wealth, riches, abundance, health, protection is all around this path. But you have to train your soul to love and honor and respect the Father in heaven. What drives me every day is when I look around at what the Father has done for me. I look at the bed that I sleep on. I look at the closets that I have. I look at the clothes that I have. I look at possessions that I have. I look at my health. I look at the fact that I don't have any pain. I look at things such as I don't have any fatigue. I'm not in the hospital. I don't take medicines. And I use those things to fuel my work ethic. When I wake up, I think about it. Here, I have another opportunity to create a photograph for the Father in heaven. The father gets to experience the performance of his wisdom. What voice is ruling you? What voice is guiding your life? 
Did you know five years ago you was not interested in today? Five years ago, you wasn't interested in today. You was interested in five years ago. You was focused on that day. You was focused on that week. You was focused on that year. But here you are five years later. And everything that's in your life today is a result of how you spent those five years. All God gives you is time and a soul. That's all you really have. You use the soul correctly, it unlocks money. You choose what you do with that money. That's life. You use the time listening to the wisdom of God. Money comes alongside of you obeying the spirit with that time. When the money comes, you decide what you do with that money. What you do with that money decides the harvest that comes to you. What you do with the seeds of your words decides what harvest has come to you. What you do with the seeds of your action decides what harvest has come to you. Nobody is deciding your life. God is not even deciding your life. You're simply a receiver of the harvests that you created with your own seeds. That's all life is. And at the end of the life, depending on what you have chosen to do, either you're going to be fit for heaven or qualified for hell. That's all life is. And the more you give yourself over to the Holy Ghost, you start recognizing how much time you have wasted. Regret is divine. If you never have any regrets, that means that you haven't learned higher. Your learning is either at the same or below. But when your learning is high, you'll have regrets. How you spend your time is basically what you're producing, what you're creating, who you're becoming. Your, if you, whatever decisions proceed out of you is an investment that you're making into your character. Jesus said a good tree cannot bear evil fruit and an evil tree cannot bear good fruit. Jesus was saying that what springs out of you is what tree you are. If you're a good tree, good things will proceed out of you, which um, I believe in Psalm 143, verse 10, if I'm not mistaken, David said that your spirit is good. Teach me to do your will for your spirit is good. So David revealed to us what being good is all about. It's where the Holy Spirit is governing your will. You give your will over to the Holy Spirit. That's what good is. And what is evil? When you keep your will away from the Holy Spirit. So when you're an evil person, if the Holy Spirit wants you to lay your head on a pillow, you'll refuse that pillow. If the Holy Spirit wants you to uh, do two jumping jacks, you'll refuse the two jumping jacks. So to be good means that you give your soul over to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, use my will. And when you're evil, you keep your soul away from the Holy Spirit and say, uh-uh, no, uh, -uh. Since the beauty of humility is that when you become a humble person, God entrusts you with riches and wealth because he knows that he can talk to you and tell you what to do with that wealth because you're humble. When you become a humble person, God, he gives you perfect health. Because you're going to take that energy that you have in your body and let him use you to solve problems on the earth.
When you're a humble person, God will give you opportunities to mentor people because he knows that when they get in your presence, you will not feed them the wrong activity, the wrong mindsets, the wrong thoughts. You will not give them the wrong information. He can trust that he could use you to teach them your realm of life. There are so much benefits of operating in the fear of God and humility. And this is where the good life is. There's another angle that you start taking when you start operating in humility. Now you're storing up treasures in heaven. So the life that God has for you on earth is going to be fulfilled. But not only that, you're going to see every deed that you did on earth in obedience to the spirit being rewarded in eternal life. Every seed that you sow doesn't just have a harvest for earth. It has a harvest for heaven. During the celebration in heaven, everybody will be recorded according to their deeds. God not going to be giving people rewards that they think that they should have. He's going to give them rewards according to their deeds. According to their words. According to what came out of your vessel. So whatever you allow to spring out of you, that's going to be your reward system. Your harvest is in heaven going to be based upon how much God was able to rule you. How much he was able to dominate you. How much he was able to tell you what he wants. How much you pursued him to find out what he wants. Blessed is the man that runs after God and finds out what God loves. Blessed is the man that exerts all of their energy into locating God's pleasures in the moment. Lord, what's, what today do you want? Lord, how do you want it today? Lord, what are you looking for from me today? Blessed is the man that is concerned about God's opinion of him. How does God think about my ways, my thoughts, my actions, how I spend my time? What is God's viewpoint? What is his opinion about me? See, saints, I'm going to tell you one thing that Satan has done is that Satan has attempted to create a concept that God is always smiling over your decisions and he's not. The Bible said in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19, you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Isaiah 120 says that if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured by the sword. If you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured by the sword. That means the curse is going to take you out. Isaiah 64, I believe that's verse 10 and on, says, And they rebelled against the Holy Ghost, and he was turned to, the, turned to be their enemy and fought against it. So there is uh, also in Hebrews, I don't know if that's Hebrews 12, but Apostle Paul was saying that our God is a consuming fire. So it's all simply what are the things that you have chosen to let proceed out of you? What have you chosen to proceed out of you? What have you chosen to let proceed out of you? This is going to control your life on earth. This is going to control your destiny in eternity. Nobody can make your decisions for you but you. Nobody can make you. Nobody can make you. This is your life. And your life will depict who you serve. The Bible says you can't serve two masters. If it be the Lord Jesus, you, you will intention. Somebody say, well, how do I know I lo love the Lord? You'll find yourself pursuing the Lord. The Bible said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Well, what is his commandments? That's why you have to seek him. Yes, the word of God is full of his commandments. But I'm saying the commandment of not going to the store is a commandment that you can only hear if you're listening for him. Yes, the Bible talks about commandments, but the commandment of don't 
answer your phone to this person. Don't talk on the phone with this person. That's a commandment that's coming from the voice of the spirit. So we have commandments that are written. Then we have commandments that are verbalized. And the commandments that are written are supposed to provoke a desire to seek the commandments that are verbalized. When you see the written commandments, which is the word of God, it's supposed to provoke or urging you to seek the commandments that are spoken. Your life will start looking like the commandments that you obey from God or disobey from God. Your life will look just like that. I want you to really be in thought about this. And I want you to really think strong on this that you're not promised to be here in two weeks or one week or three days or two days. I just want you to really think about this. Even though you may have a work schedule this week, you may have children, you may have a wife, you may have a husband. It's really not promised that you're going to be here for the next Seven days, eight days, 12 days, 15 days. It's not promise. So really spend your brain power. And of course, being excellent at your job, at your workplace, and being submissive, respecting your boss, loving your boss, uh, showing them honor, showing them respect, coming into work on time. Um, taking the appropriate amount of time for the lunch break. Don't go over the lunch break. Um, receiving offers from the boss. If he tells you, do you think you can come in Saturday? Don't tell the boss. No, nah, I can't come in. I, I, I Say, boss, um, I, I don't really know how I could come in, but I'm going to do everything I can to come in. Um, I, I may have to pick my child somewhere. I'll keep you updated. Could I just have a couple hours to see if I could situate something to pick my child somewhere and I'll be in to work on Saturday? Really be conscious of spending all of your energy in good works so that when you stand before God, you can receive the crown of life for your obedience to him because you was an excellent representative of him and you could stand with confidence knowing that he approved of who you chose to be. So just really be conscious that life is not really guaranteed tomorrow. Or even tonight. Life is not guaranteed in two days. So. Be intentional about talking with God a lot. Talk with him a lot. And ask him questions about things. One way that you could. Uh, professionalize hearing God's voice is asking him things that like. Uh, you 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 normally ignore him about like ask him like Lord do you like this outfit that I got on Lord um, what should I do concerning this Lord do I do it should I take this round and it just you mold yourself because saints I'm gonna tell you like this here there's gonna be billions of people from this generation, but it's also generations before this one. And when they stand before the Lord, they're going to want to hide because they don't know this great being, King Jesus, Jehovah God. They don't know who he is. And to know that you didn't please this person that made you is a dreadful thing. 
So you, you want to be encouraged about that, to have more talks with God. Talk with him about your life. Earlier today, the word of the Lord came to me to tell you to say that when I got on the line. It was around 12 noon today that the Lord gave me that so that when I spoke to you, to tell you, to talk to the Lord about your life.